Welcome to the Path Funk Presents podcast. My name is Sean Donnelly Lewis, and in today's episode, we're speaking with Johannes Johannes Humbert, and he is the managing director at Tetro.ai. Johannes, how's it going? Hi, Sean. Um, first of all, yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Glad to talk to you. It's going great, actually. Thank you. Good. Good. The weather, I mean, sun shining where you're at looks great. All right. Tell us about Tetro. What do you guys do? So uh, we at Tetro, we came from a background of building digital companies, uh, mathematics, uh, physics. So we focus on machine learning, deep learning. And what we specifically do is we try to leverage knowledge workers in their particular fields and add an epsilon on their productivity via natural language processing. So taking extremely complicated unstructured data sets, insurance contracts, industry contracts, for example, putting them <clears throat> to a structured format that then allows people with the actual expertise to more productively work on problems that they have in the domain, for example. Um, this is one part of our business. And the other part um, where we focus on is high dimensional forecasting. So you have a customer, how likely is it to churn? You have a customer, what's the next best product for him or her? Um, what's the best price to set? And those two let's say sides of our business, they coincide very well, work very well together. And we focus on financial technology, um, banking, insurance, telecommunications, work mainly with big enterprise. And yeah, that's, it's about the sum of it. <laughs> right. So, so normally the, the, your clientele are normally mid-sized to big companies. Is that what I'm picking up? Talk about your clientele for a second. So yeah, it's basically our background. So we have an interesting, interesting founding story um, because we have never taken venture capital. Um, but there's this one telecommunication company uh, from Germany, one-on-one -on -one, um, Versatel, and they are servicing B2B clients. And they kind of asked us to build a machine learning model for them. We said yes, fortunately. <laughs> and um, we used this uh, initial revenue to basically build the company and have been profitable ever since and um, been very, let's say, network focused in our first few years, months of growth. And then discovered we are kind of at a moment in time where we can now start to grow faster. This was about one and a half years ago and picked up other industries as well. And I have a background in the financial, financial uh, industry. I've been building uh, fintech startups for the last 12 years. So it was a natural extension to go into that market. And um, yeah, a little bit of energy. We have Canon, for example, is one of our customers. So there's some classic industry as well. And let's put it like this. Um, at the moment, we have no growth problem. <laughs> but, um, it is also very interesting because what you figure out as an early stage startup, you do a lot of things. Um, and we are kind of product productizing more and narrowing it down more and deeper integrating us into the value chains of our customers. And the real innovation is when you combine those two, when you have the model that gives you the signal, the intelligence, and then you do the, operational, the operationalization and kind of build the infrastructure to really, yeah, get what you kind of have in the signal onto 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 the floor like make people do their jobs better um alter processes kind of automate things around them so that there is actual more production possible and just thinking about how you guys have been able to grow you reference some of that organic growth through referrals through companies and networking and whatnot what does the digital side look like are you guys doing a lot of digital marketing are you even are you even there because do you want more work, right? Talk about talk about growth for a second. Has it been SEO, SEM, those sort of <laughs> avenues? So um, one particular thing about the European market when it comes to artificial intelligence is a lot of companies are talking about it and few companies are actually doing it. Um, so the first barrier is always trust and it's usually strategic. So you have to get to see level people. And there's multiple ways to do that, but our usual customer journey is something like a mixture of network and content and social media and our website so seo it becomes more and more important because those people kind of search the internet they try to connect the dots and you have to be there you have to be present um so that's a hygiene factor um we launched our first website actually last year so we are now iterating on it um 
and hopefully getting better at it um, because it wasn't our focus in the first years. Um, I have in my branches or in my industries, I have a, not say strong, but I have a social media following on LinkedIn. So that's one channel that we're utilizing. And we have built a network of consultancies and other people who kind of know us, trust us, know what we kind of built and to integrate that. So that when we reach out to somebody or somebody comes across us, there's really the quick connection. Okay, those guys actually know what they're doing and they're trustworthy because they have done it. And this is what they actually do. This is a very important part that have to come together um, at the moment, at least to be successful in that area. Mm -hmm. And thinking about the website for a second, obviously client generation mm -hmm. is, a, is a big deal. Um, you talked about the fact that you guys are continuing to tinker with it to make small changes. If you could yes. improve one thing on the website, what would it be? Would it be the ability to convert? Would it be the quality of leads? Would it be the user experience? Where do you, where do you feel like Tetral could, could, could improve? No, I would say it's the conversion for a fact. Um, I think there are multiple aspects to it. So first of all, it's not necessarily that people search for artificial intelligence. So picking your keywords correctly is a big challenge to be where people are actually looking for product that you can deliver because it's really early stage for some of our markets. Um, so this is one thing. Um, the next thing is when they're on the page to kind of make them, enable them, enable people to do the transfer thinking, to say, okay, this is what those guys are offering and this is how I can apply it. So you have to nail the use cases and really make it accessible and really make it tangible. It's not, we say we do something with artificial intelligence on our front page, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not, I'm not so sure yet. <laughs> but what people relate to most are very concrete things that we actually talk about. Um, and to take that and to convert it into real intent, I think that is one of the biggest challenges because these buying centers are very complex. The topic is complex, it's technical. Usually there are multiple people involved and to really get the first person um, who's doing the research, who's kind of collecting whose company is working on this, who could be potentially working on this topic, to get those people, um, get them really interested and keep them coming back to your content um, so that you become the source of information for them. Actually, yeah. that's one of the goals that we have as our websites. And just coming back to what you guys offer, what you guys do just for everyone listening, what would you say helped you guys stand out? I'm thinking you're, you're talking about a field that, that could be, like you said, where, where it's hard to get traction or even it's a field that it's continuing where there is no competition. I'm not sure. I don't, you know, we do a little bit of, of website <laughs> AI, but, but when what you guys are doing is a little bit different, talk about what you guys do differently that helps you stand out in, in, from other people that occupy the same space. Right, so talking USPs, um, one early thing that we had, um, everybody was doing kind of those um, high dimensional forecasting for consumers uh, or consumer facing customers, companies, and we were always doing it for B2B companies. So this is one thing. And through that, we acquired some knowledge about the, the, the industry as such and the, let's say, special applications as such. And then there's pair of simply parametrization. So if you have a model that works very well um, in for one specific set of users, for one product in one industry, and you have done it with like 15 companies, it's very hard um, to get even close to that performance because through transfer learning, you can to some extent simply take the learnings from one company and input them into the next system and put them into the next system. So if you have a vertical or a domain that you have really good access to, you can make it defendable as such. That is really one thing that I would say distinguish us, distinguishes us in one field. The other thing um, which might not be so transparent is we always, started um, on the hypothesis that we will have competition from the real big players like Google and such if we do the generic stuff. So like if you can just train a language model, then yeah, somebody is going to take it away from you. If it's just predicting churn for some businesses, Salesforce is going to take that away from you for sure. 
So we always looked into the things where you have to have really heavy domain knowledge. Um, in, a, in a sense that even ourselves, we sometimes don't have that expertise. And so we partner up with other companies to build products which are not even visible necessarily um, if you don't know the industry as such. So this combination of domain and tech, it's also, it springs from a source um, um, of inspiration, this is, this is nothing I've, I've come up with, but that real innovation is not in technology, but in changing the value chain. So for that, you have to really understand the value chain. And the deeper you go, the more complex the industry is you're working in, and the more fundamental the problem becomes, um, the harder it is to tackle from the outside. And to get to that point where you can really work on problems with a very specific um, well, a lot of things have to come together. This is what we spend, spend quite some time on in business development. And it's working pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many, there's so much that you said that I wanna that I wanna that I wanna ask you about. But but I, I do want to pick your brain about marketing things. Um, we talked sure. before the show, you said that this is this is your wheelhouse. So I'm ready for some yeah. great answers. When it comes to marketing, when I say the word innovation, what would you say is the biggest challenge? To, to that in the marketing space? Well, at the moment, um, I mean, this is very, this is very, um, the, the background is very sad because we are facing a global pandemic and everybody's flogging into social media, everybody's flogging into online marketing. It's become a very crowded, very, very noisy space. Yeah. So an undervalued attention isn't out there anymore, I would say. It's that everybody kind of got to the usual channels. Um, so have the basics, nail the basics, know who you are, be authentic, know your product, know your niche, like target exactly and content is really king. That's one thing, um, to have that in perspective, I think requires a lot of thinking and, uh, also introspective thinking to figure out who you are as a company. What is your product? What is your product? Who's your product really for? How do you communicate that? Um, so not communicating from the inside out, but from the outside in, um, like really looking at your customers. This is, I would say, one very crucial piece because when it's noisy, you have to kind of make the effort to be the guy who really talks about what his audience is interested in. This is, I think, one fundamental thing. The other thing that I strongly believe in is testing. Um, so whenever you have something that's going for you, that's working for you, double down, um, but never bet too heavy on one channel. Um, always keep iterating, 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 um, especially if you're a young company, if you're a small company, that's easy to do. But even if you're a big company, it's better to like put out 25 pieces of small content than spend, uh, I don't know, a fortune on one piece of content and just hold your thumbs, I would say. <laughs> and that also comes down to my channel strategy. There are so many different social media outlets at the moment um, that you have to cover, in my opinion. Um, not every channel is relevant, relevant for every business, but I'm getting targeted on Instagram for B2B companies who want to sell me software for my business, actually. <laughs> and I, I, I'm curious. I'm not doing that at the moment myself, but I'm curious to kind of go there. And then you have to kind of have this website that's impeccable, I think, because especially in B2B, imagine you're this young associate of a CEO and they want to kick off a program to tackle some strategic challenge for them. And it's like, okay, how do we do that? We have an idea which KPIs we're working against. Um, we have a rough idea of our processes. Um, we have requirements from the business side. We have requirements from the tech side. So who's the vendor we're working with? And then somebody goes out and does the research. And you really have to think about not what you can do as a company, but how to best empower those people. And they, first they have to find you, then they have to find the relevant content in your space. Then they need an accessible way to communicate to you. You as a company who's putting out that kind of content, you would want to know who's actually looking at us mm -hmm. and why. And then find a way to kind of start the communication that can be on social media again. So retargeting is really a thing. 
if you know, for example, the guys of Siemens are looking at your webpage quite frequently, it might be a good idea to have a little LinkedIn campaign in their direction. <laughs> um, so combining those as well and be very flexible about it. So this is maybe, maybe one of the bigger trends here is that growth in terms of sales and marketing, um, which have been two distinct fields, I think they move closer together step by step by step by step. And I think it's very important to kind of get into these hybrid kind of thinking and not leave out any possibility. And if, if you're a sales guy and you can pitch, great, good for you. Great, super great, actually. But it's not going to be enough uh, in the next five to 10 to 15 years, especially in B2B sales. You will have to be aware where your audience is actually consuming information. And you will necessarily have to be able to go there to some extent and to be present there. If it's social media, social media. If it's PR, it's PR doesn't matter really but you have to have the skills and the competency to do that and vice versa as a marketing person um you can't think in like really big brand um fancy spots anymore Colorful, that's, that's, yeah yeah that's not that's not working you have to be more agile and if a salesperson comes to you and says hey man we need to get into this account we really could help some use some help from here and here and here just being able to put together those micro campaigns this is going to be hugely important um, in the next few years, months, I mean, right now. And to develop that as an internal capability, I think it's really important. And to not do that with like a 50 people team, but maybe with three or four or five people, um, which is interesting because you need, I think you need very smart generalists who really buy into this kind of, how can we tweak that? Um, which is which is a mindset of those. It's, uh, I you, I used to think about uh, my marketing and sales seems like little pirate ships. So like, how can we tweak that? <laughs> <laughs> pirate ships, love it. Okay, just I want to switch gears here for a second and talk about you as a leader. What kind of content do you consume to educate yourself and grow not only as a professional but as a person? Oh, um, so I would say I'm a pot cast addict um heavily podcast addict um i i mean I, I have a business to run and two kids so i don't have that much time on my hand <laughs> um when i have time on my hand i try to do sports to be happy and healthy for a long time and so i got into this habit of running and listening to podcasts at twice the speed um so just to do to you actually do you actually retain it do you remember some of the yeah. stuff really yes i do Actually, okay. if it's very if it's very complicated and good stuff, um, then I maybe will have to hear it uh, twice, or I slow down to one point five factor one point five speed. Yeah, but yeah, it actually works pretty good. Once you get a little bit used to it, um, it actually becomes annoying to hear it on normal speed no because way. you're just like, come on, get to it, <laughs> get to the meat, get to the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So that is one thing. I'm a podcast addict. Um, Another thing is I try to kind of well work 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 on basic skills. Um, I, I have this little habit. I'm I'm in a, in a in a pretty pretty numeric driven space or math heavy space. Um, so I just constantly iterate on those skills, like really hard skills, doing math problems, doing a little coding here, doing that. So like. Don't get rusty. I'm not going to win a Nobel Prize there. No way in hell. It's not my 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 way. But to kind of kind of have that and check because like sports, if you don't use it, you lose it. And from the other side, I really love to talk to people. And the best insights about how a field is progressing is from people who have really strong knowledge. Um, there's maybe a LinkedIn, little bit of LinkedIn learning. Maybe there's a few YouTube channels I follow. But the main thing is really for me is the person who I know has expertise in a domain and says, go look at that or follow that, or do that. And just because we're coming to the end of the interview, I want to do some rapid fire questions with you. So they're just short and sweet. I answer the question or I ask question you answer as quickly and honestly as possible. How's that sound? Sound good. Fire away. Okay. What's the last book that you read, Johannes? 
Uh, Animal Farm. Animal Farm. Wow, going with is that George Orwell, right? Yeah, that's George Orwell. Wow. All right. Uh, what's the single focus that your company? What's the single focus? The single thing? Sorry, that your company is focused on the most at the moment. Increasing productivity of knowledge workers. So making smarter people smarter. Okay, sounds good. If there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you want to have fixed for your company today? Holy. I would like every CEO on the planet know that we exist and when he should purchase us, purchase us. So like, like beaming that knowledge to them would be great, actually. <laughs> What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about your company? I think um, since we're not venture capital founded, it's um, keeping risk at bay while investing strong enough, um, balancing that out. That's difficult. If you were to, let's just say you said you, you've been doing startups for 12 years. Let's go back, go back 12 years. If you were to restart doing these things, doing startups, what would be the one piece of advice you give yourself? Take more risk and trust more people. All right, everyone. That was Johannes Humbert. You can check out all the work that they're doing at tetral.ai. Johannes, thank you so much for being on the show today. The last matter that we have today is, is the last word. So this is basically where I just give you the floor. It's dangerous on our part, I know, but I just let you talk about anything you want to talk about. If you just want to sum up everything that we talked about, or if you feel like there's something that we missed, I just want to give you the last word today. The floor is yours. All right, Sean. Yeah, first of all, it's, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, been very interesting. I liked it a lot. Um, Usually, I think everybody would expect me to now go into marketing and talk a little bit about, about Tetro. And I will utilize the time to say a few words about artificial intelligence in general. Um, so not about Tetro directly. What I think is the space that we are all working in, uh, in the artificial intelligence community, is in driving efficiency um, within the different domains that we are in. I think this is a very worthy pursuit. To do that and i think that is one of the most interesting fields um, that we currently have in business to be honest at least i feel so but that's a personal opinion the one thing <clears throat> that i'm missing is um a coherent way to communicate it to public and business leaders um who are kind of oftentimes at least in europe um afraid is the wrong word but not certain how to implement the technology best and i think we all could do a lot better job uh, uh, frequently a much better job in addressing those issues so kind of going there talking about the applications talking more to what this actually could mean and leveraging business and driving business forward and empowering business in germany especially we have these mid-sized companies all over the place they are industry champions uh, in their niches and they start to fall behind in technology because oftentimes it's difficult for them to adapt something which is completely something which is completely new. And I think it still is underrated what kind of impact this technology will have. And I think it's a very interesting quest to make this more accessible and more tangible. And on the other hand, I think consumers should think about this a lot more because a lot of their behavior already is algorithm driven. Um, so social media sex, social media sucks you in for a reason, yeah. and that will increase and increase and increase and increase. So we have to have more transparency on all of those issues. This is something I kind of think about in the duality of loving what I do, and at the same time thinking, wow, this is some major applications, and not all of them are pretty, all of them are good. Um, so let's make this transparent more. Let's talk about this more. Let's give it, give it, give it a broader audience, and let's make it understandable more. Um, artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence, such a buzzword, such a big term. Um, let's break it down into something which is actually digestible and put it out there. Um, Great, thanks so much, be... Johannes. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to it. Until next time. <laughs>